turning the Hack5 Keycroc into an RTL SDR server, this time on Hack5. Hey everyone, Glitch here and welcome back to Hack5. At DEF CON 27 last year, Darren let me in the loop on the Hack5 Keycroc after I was talking about the Bash Bunny and how I wish it had a USB port and Wi-Fi so that I could do unofficial things with it for use in drones and other such projects like the one we're going to be talking about today. Well, lo and behold, that's exactly what the Keycroc is. Specifically, he was telling me how it was a quad-core CPU with half a gig of RAM, and it was just running Linux under the hood. So that's what we're talking about today, more unofficial uses of the Hack5 Keycroc. Now, unlike my keyboard implant video I did a few weeks back, you don't have to open up the Keycroc or do anything too sketchy with it. In fact, we actually put together a payload file that you can drop on the Keycroc so that you don't even have to SSH into it. It just works as if you're loading any other payload onto it. You don't even have to connect to it over SSH. You set up the Wi-Fi, drop the payload file on, unplug it, plug it back in, type setup, and it will run everything for you. So let's show you that. So starting off, we're only gonna assume a couple things, and that is that your croc is connected to Wi-Fi as per the little instruction card that's included that tells you how to configure it, and that you have added the payload file to the payloads folder like so. Oh, and I did want to note that this has been tested both on the 1.249 firmware as well as the beta 1.3502 something or other. So I don't believe there's going to be any issues with firmware compatibility going forward for at least a few versions. If something crops up, I will do my best to take care of it. However, at this time, firmware version is unimportant. So all we have to do once we've added our payloads file to the payloads folder is close this window, bring over notepad, plug in a keyboard because I have a Bluetooth keyboard. So... I'm using a weird configuration. Unplug the croc. Plug it back in so it's now out of arming mode. Don't forget to safely eject. Wait for the croc to boot, as indicated by the light coming on and then going off. Wait for it, wait for it. And then we can come over to our notepad file and type setup. And look, mom, no hands. It automatically runs through, checks if RTL SDR is installed installs RTL SDR, all the while printing out these helpful things. There we go. The install time does take a little bit because it's also running an apt update in the background. So depending on the internet speed and so on, it can take a few moments. Now, once that's done, it returns success. It configures the service, then it enables the service and done. We've just configured our croc as an SDR server. Now to prove that to you, all you have to do is unplug the croc, plug in an SDR, Plug the croc back in, wait for it to boot, and while we're waiting for it to boot, we will switch over back to our screen, and I'll pull up RTL Sharp, or rather SDR Sharp. SDR Sharp has opened, our croc has booted. Now keep in mind, because we don't actually have a keyboard plugged into the croc, the white will only be white, but that is fine. Now we'll go over here and configure our source. This croc's IP address is 192.168.262, and hit start and stop because that's copyrighted music. Anyway, as you can see, we actually have the Hack5 Keycroc with an SDR plugged into it, transmitting from our computer to, well, our computer. Now that's where you might be wondering, what's the utility of this? Well, what you missed in one of the jump cuts was, I actually have it running on a USB battery bank. So I can set this anywhere within range of the network, of the Wi-Fi network that is, and have an SDR broadcasting directly to my computer. So the thing is, is I'm using SDR Sharp just because it's an easy GUI and it makes it really easy to illustrate what kind of signals you can pick up. However, you could also use GQRX or use it as a source in GNU radio or anything else or as a source in Osmocom so that you can do GSM sniffing if that's still a thing where you live and you're doing it on your own phone so you're not actually wiretapping right. Now you may also have noticed that I am using a USB extension and that is highly advised. Uh, ideally you'll use one with a ferrite choke on it as well to avoid switch mode noise from the battery pack as well as any CPU noise from the Keycroc. Also it will take some stress off the Keycroc's USB port as this is a rather long thing. You don't want all that torque on the USB port of the Keycroc. Now let's take a quick look at the script that makes this all work. First off, we're matching setup so that when we type setup, it will kick off. Now, at some point, we are looking to get rid of this. However, current firmware versions 
need a little work with regards to doing matchless files. Beyond that, we're doing LED setup. This puts the LED into Magenta so that we know that it's actually doing something. Uh, it will then quack enter so that it just returns after our setup. It will quack string so that we can say, okay, we're gonna check if RTL SDR is installed. Then we're going to do this fancy bash command, which is basically checking if RTL underscore SDR is installed. We'll get into why that's important in a moment. And if it isn't, it will then install RTL SDR by running apt update. It'll run apt install RTL dash SDR. And it will then quack if success if it succeeded, failed if it didn't. And it will then exit that if it didn't succeed so that it doesn't go on and make the service file. Now the service file is basically just a cat to end of file and then all of this. And basically it's creating a systemd file because apparently we can't just put things in rc.local anymore and expect it to work. And that's basically just going to come down here and execute a bin bash, which will run rtl t underscore tcp tac a with its IP address. So that no matter, so you don't have to manually configure the IP address, it automatically gets the IP address by running hostname dash uppercase i. It will always try to restart so that if you unplug your SDR, plug in a different SDR or whatever, it will try to restart automatically. Uh, and then down here, it end the files so, so that it knows when to stop filling the service file. And then we're going to enable the service by system control start RTL SDR, system control enable SDR. Uh, then it will quack string done so that everything works. And assuming RTL SDR is already installed, of course, it will then finish and LED finish. And it's as simple as that. That actually took several days to figure out because I don't know bash. And just to tell you how much I don't know bash, remember how I said RTL underscore SDR is important in the if command, but later we install RTL dash SDR. Well, the package maintainers of RTL SDR didn't use the same naming convention. So I was chasing a bug for the better part of an hour trying to figure out why the script what kept trying to reinstall RTL SDR. Well, it was checking to see if RTL dash SDR is a, a command it can run when the command is actually RTL underscore SDR. I hope that makes sense. I have been staring at this display for quite some time getting this all working. However, I'm happy to say that it now does and you'll be able to find all the relevant files for this or the relevant file because we got it down to one payload file over on the GitHub in the payload section and it'll probably be integrated into a later release. I don't know, don't quote me on that quite yet. Anyway, if you wanna get your own key crocs or USB extensions from the Hack5 Essentials Cable Kit, head on over to the Hack5 store and purchase those things. I've been Glitch, thank you all for watching. Glitch out. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.